The conversation on who is the greatest quarterback in the NFL history is a lengthy one. Is it the most yards? Is it the most touchdowns? Is it the most Super Bowl wins? Are different eras a factor? One could go on and on about what constitutes a great NFL quarterback, and many names could be thrown in the ring for the battle of the GOAT. However, the conversations usually stares in two directions of two men, Tom Brady and Joe Montana, both of whom were taken much later than the usual Hall of Famers. With 10 Super Bowl rings, five NFL MVP awards, seven Super Bowl MVP awards, and more than 15,000 passing yards between them. Is there a right answer? Here is the tale of the tape in the ongoing Tom Brady vs. Joe Montana battle. You might be saying, the rules have changed so much, how can you compare these two? Is the rules changed after the 1932 playoff game show? The NFL is champion changes that promote more scoring and more excitement. In the 1930s, Leaders of the still young league wanted to make the professional game more entertaining in the hopes of that its popularity would surpass the college football. By 1940, the NFL has legalized passing from any point behind the line of scrimmage, removed penalties for multiple incomplete passes in the same series of downs, moved hash marks closer to the center of the field and instituted a 15-yard penalty for roughing the passer. It even adjusted the shape of the ball to make it more pass-friendly. In 1940 report, the rule committee stated bluntly, each game should provide a maximum of entertainment insofar as it can be controlled by the rules of officials. The entertainment value of the game, it added, could be measured by the number of players in plays per game of a type that will be pleasing to the audience. NFL consultants and statistical guru Hugh Ray enshrined in the Hall of Fame for his for his contribution to officiating the rule making reinforce this notion. During his work in the NFL from the late 1930s to early 1950s, Ray crutched the numbers and found a direct correlation between scoring and high attendance. A statistical basis for his recommendation of offense boosted rule changes. His devotion to statistics as a way to analyze and improve the game also stuck with the league. Flash forward to 1972. In, the, in that year, the NFL moved hash marks to their present day location, 70 feet 9 inches, about 23 yards from the sideline, exactly in line with the goalposts. The league wanted to boost offense by widening the short side of the field where defenses used the sideline as an extra defender. The 1972 change did help the running game. The number of 1,000-yard runners doubled that year from 5 to 10, and rushing yards per game climbed. But the overall impact of offenses was not what the NFL intended or desired. Field goals became easier because the ball now could be placed and kicked from the hash mark aligned from the goalposts. A better angle for kickers than the previous location. That placement also meant that teams didn't have to waste an offensive play trying to move closer to the center of the field. The shift also hindered the passing game by making it more difficult for quarterbacks to get a pre-snap read on defense covers and call an audible to change the play because it didn't have to protect an especially wide side. The defense no longer had to reveal its coverage by committing players to a side before the snap. This enabled coaches to begin disguise the coverage and stifle the passing attack. 
The hash mark new location also helped pass defenses by creating visual marks on the field for the five underneath zones some team liked to uh, play at the time. In 1972 and 1973, passing yards per game declined. Bill Walsh was hired to be the 49ers head coach in the 1978 offseason. Walsh was a disciple of Paul Brown and served as Brown's offensive coordinator with the Cincinnati Bengals from 1968 to 1975. However, Brown did not appoint him as a successor upon the retirement. Choosing another assistant, former 49ers center Bill Tiger Johnson, desiring to be a head coach, Walsh went to University of Stanford in 1977. Walsh is given credit for putting West Coast offense on the map. The Bill Walsh offense was actually created and refined while he was an assistant coach with the Bengals. The offensive utilized a short, precise time pass game as a replacement of the running game. The, in Walsh's first draft, the 49ers has targeted Notre Dame quarterback Joe Montana as an early round pick. Montana had enjoyed a storied career in college, leading the Fighting Iris to the 1977 national title and number of dramatic comeback victories. Most scouts did not peg Montana as the top prospect. Although six foot two, 190 pounds, Montana's arm strength was considered suspect as was the consistency of his play. Although he did get his share of credit, most thought of him as a system quarterback surrounded by a great team. Joe Montana was taken in the third round, 82nd overall pick out of Notre Dame in 1979 NFL Draft. Joe Montana was the most successful NFL quarterback of his era. He played in all 16 games in his rookie season with the San Francisco 49ers, but was a backup for Steve DeBerg and started only once. He became the full-time starter in 1982 and led the league in completion percentage the next two years. The 49ers became a powerhouse in the 1980s, winning four Super Bowls. Montana was the first player uh, to win three Super Bowl MVP awards in those four Super Bowl victories. Montana threw 122 passes with zero interceptions, still an NFL record. Tom Brady, like Montana, Tom Brady was taken late in the draft, chosen sixth round out of Michigan with the 199th overall selection in 2000 draft by the New England Patriots. The Patriots won the Super Bowl that season and Brady was named the MVP. His first of four in his career. After missing the playoffs the following year, Brady and the Pats won back-to-back -back Super Bowl titles in 2003 and 2004. What's been amazing about Tom Brady is his durability. Outside of the knee injury that kept him out in the 2008 season, his ability to play at a high level at the quarterback position in the NFL is essential and unparalleled. He holds the NFL record for most years as a starter with one team and also has the most playoff wins and appearances of any player in history. Seven Super Bowl rings is the most in history. So let's get down to it. Who is the better quarterback, Tom Brady or Joe Montana? Some would say that it's an easy call as Brady has more rings, more wins, more yards, and pretty much more everything um, than does Montana. However, it must be taken into account that Brady has started nearly 120 more games, yes, that speaks to his durability and that must also be put in play. So let's dive into averages then. Certainly years have to be taken out of both, right? Neither was the full-time starter during their res respective rookie seasons. And Montana was the starter for only half of the 1980 season. 
there was a strike shortened season in 1982 and Montana missed half of the 1986 season, all of 1991, and played in just one game in 1992. So let's take the strike shortened season and a half a season and turn it into one. Brady played in just one game in 2008. So that's out. So that's 11 full seasons for Montana and 18 for Brady. Montana averaged approximately 3,503 yards, 23 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions per season in comparison. Brady has averaged 4,138 yards, 30 touchdowns, and 10 picks. Advantage Brady. Joe Montana won his fourth Super Bowl in his 10th year as a starter. Brady won his fourth and 14th season as a starter. Average Montana. Brady has won seven Super Bowl titles to Montana for advantage Brady. Joe Montana never lost a Super Bowl advantage Montana. Any way you look at it, the argument can be made for either one. There are three reasons why I think Tom Brady is the GOAT. Number three. In comparison, let's look at regular season dominance. Now, Tom Brady has 230 total wins and 69 losses in regular season. He has a winning percentage of 76% of his games in in the regular season the second winning quarterback in nfl history to brett Favre with 186 wins and 112 losses now joe montana played in the nfl from 1979 to 1994 retired in 1995 and is ranked 12th as the winning quarterback with 117 wins and 47 losses so advantage to brady with a 71 percent winning percentage tom brady has 581 touchdowns he is the number one and number two in passing yards with 79,204. tom brady is third with 49 game winning drives. Joe Montana played for two teams also. He had 32 game winning drives. He won 100 games and lost 39 with the San Francisco 49ers. And as a Kansas City Chief, he won 17 games and eight losses in 1993 and 1994. The San Francisco 49ers were dormant in the 1970s and Joe Montana and Bill Walsh led the team to dominate in the 1980s. Joe Montana had 32 fourth quarter comebacks. He threw for 40,000 yards and 273 touchdowns with 139 interceptions with a passer rating of 92.3. He had two MVP seasons. So in regards to that, I would give the advantage to Tom Brady. Let me give you the second reason why Tom Brady is the GOAT. Playoff dominance. Tom Brady has the most consecutive seasons in the NFL playoffs by one team, player or head coach, with 12 consecutive seasons. Tom has most playoff wins with 34. He had 11 losses, most consecutive wins by a starting quarterback between 2001 and 2005, and he had the most fourth quarter comebacks with nine. Joe Montana's record in the playoffs, he's 16 and seven with 45 touchdowns with 21 interceptions. The number one reason why Tom Brady is the GOAT Tom Brady won seven Super Bowls. He won most Super Bowl wins than any other franchise. He has seven. New England has six. And Pittsburgh Steelers has six. It took Pittsburgh Steelers 50 years to get six rings. That only took Tom Brady 20 to get seven. He is the only quarterback to win Super Bowls from both AFC and NFC conferences. He is one of the two quarterbacks to win a Super Bowl with two separate teams. 
most TD passes with 21 and most passing yards in the Super Bowl with 3,139. Montana started and won four Super Bowls and was the first player ever to have been named Super Bowl Most Valuable Player three times. He also holds Super Bowl career records for most passing yards without an interception, which is 122 in four games, and the all-time highest passing rating of 127.8 in 1993. I would give this category to Tom Brady. Tom Brady been the 10 Super Bowls with five MVPs in the Super Bowl. Definitely fantastic. Tell me what you think about this video. Do you think Tom Brady is the best, the greatest of all time? Leave a message. And also, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And also hit that bell if you want more videos like this. And I'll see you on the next video. Take it! 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 Take it!